Hey, it's Allison here, and I am continuing along with my Clear the Desk layouts and playing along with the Paper Issues Challenges. So the challenge today that I am um, participating in is the free file, free for all. So you just have to pick one of their um, free cut files, download it, cut something out, and use it on your layout. Um, I have actually combined three different free cut files and it's gonna be hard for you to see it on here because it's white on white, but um, I have have some little Polaroid frames. I have some flowers. Now this um, cut file is actually supposed to be one giant flower, but I wanted to sprinkle them around, so I've scaled it down. We'll see how well it pops out of my mat. We've got some arrows and a few words about cool, awesome, and smile. And my plan is to actually color them. So I've, I've cut them out of white cardstock and I want to use my inks um, to give them a bit of color so that I can layer them on here. What I have going here is a double page spread. And when I was putting this kit together, this paper was one of the sort of jumping off points, I suppose, or the more colorful, challenging papers. And instead of tackling it right away, which um, I did with the first kit, I um, have been kind of avoiding it. So it's time to stop avoiding it and pull it out and use it on a layout. And um, these photos from my daughter's graduation day, this is, they're photos of her with um, old teachers. So these are her grade seven teachers, and then uh, her kindergarten teacher, her grade one teacher, her grade two teacher, sorry, grade two teacher and grade three teacher and I didn't get pictures with her grade four teacher. Her grade five teacher wasn't at the school this particular year, and I didn't get pictures with her grade six teacher either. So um, what I am wanting to portray um, using this particular paper and these photos is the concept of um, community and family and village. Um, so this, these are the people that make up our village that is raising or helping to raise our daughter. Um, so yeah, so I thought this paper was appropriate for that. And I have also pulled various branding strips. And um, I figure I can use some of those to um, add some border strips to sort of brighten this up because it's very sort of white on white at the moment. And then I also want to bring some of these colors into my die cuts and then sprinkle those on the layout. Okay, so right now I am going to extricate my die cuts from my super sticky mat, so that could take me quite a while, and then I'll get started coloring. So once I have these all popped off, I will come back. Okay guys, keeping it real. This is what I was able to salvage. Yep. Um, I'm not sure if my mat is too sticky, or my blade's not sharp enough, I don't know what's going on. But um, these flowers did not work at all. They are completely stuck to my mat. So um, I gave up on my flowers. I have two of the words that I managed to get cut out. A few of the arrows. This one is not perfect, but I can probably hide that. And I've got a few of the frames that just need to be cleaned up. Um, and we'll go from there. Yeah, keeping it real, people. Okay, I have trimmed out what I could, clean things up, and then with the little sort of insides of the photo frames, I decided to sort of test my different inks that I had pulled aside. And um, I pulled out my two Distress Oxide inks. I was looking for colors that were in this pattern. And the pink is a good match. This is not totally a good match, but it's, it's not horrible. Um, so I basically just took a sponge, this is just a makeup sponge that I cut apart, sponged it on to the cardstock and then splattered it with drops of water. And that gives this nice modeled effect, I quite like that. I don't know how well that's going to show up on pieces that are quite small. So we'll see. With my other colors, I just sort of played a little bit. So I. I have pulled out some uh, 
uh, Simon Says Stamp, these are the hybrid ink. These are just the little cubes that I get in my card kits every month. We don't get an ink pad every month, but um, so I was just testing out the colors and I, I basically just took the ink pad and swiped it on. And um, the orange is pretty good match. It's very bright though. This one is called Watermelon and it's not such a good match. The Distress Oxide is a much better match, but together they're not too bad. And the yellow is pretty good. Um, this one I actually put the ink onto my mat and then took a water brush and just um, painted it onto my car stuff. And then last but not least, I have this uh, little Distress Ink in Chipped Sapphire. So I just painted it on this one. It's a pretty good match to that blue. This one, um, I again, I had it on my um, mat here and then I, I sort of loaded up my brush and I just, I didn't reload it, I just wiped it all the way down so you get this gradated gradient effect, this sort of ombre, and I quite like that. And then this one, I was trying to mix the um, chipped sapphire with the cracked pistachio, um, but because this is the Distress Oxide and this is a Distress Ink, they don't mix very well. You get this sort of muddied look uh, because this one is actually almost white, I suppose. It has like a chalk base to it, I suppose. And this one is more like your normal ink. So I don't think I will try that. So I was just playing to see what sort of different effects I could get with my inks and some water um, so that I can figure out what I want to do with all of my white pieces. So now I just get to play. Okay, so I'm just choosing which colors I want on the layout. I don't want all of them on the layout. And even though that yellow is a good match to some of the yellows that, that are in the pattern paper, it's quite bright. So I decided to go with the two Distress inks, the orange and the um, sort of dark blue, the sapphire, chipped sapphire. And I'm starting with that one. And I really liked that ombre effect that I got on the little piece of cardstock. So I am trying to replicate that. And I basically um, load up my brush with the ink. I've, I've daubed it onto my work surface, added a couple drops of water, and then loaded up my brush tip with the ink and then brushed it on, trying not to reload. And even with the frame, trying to go across um, to keep it consistent side to side so that you can definitely see that it's darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. Uh, with the Distress Oxide, I'm taking my makeup sponge and I dab some on and then I spritz it with water and then reapply the ink with the makeup sponge just to get a more saturated look. And then I take my, my spritzer, I pull the wand out and flick, it, um, flick water onto it to give those water droplets. And then with this awesome word, I just put on lots and lots of ink and then I think I do spritz it again, but I, I don't think I filmed that. So rather than watch me um, color all of these, I basically did the same technique and now they're all finished and it's time to put my layout together. And I talked about putting these branding strips um, along the bottom um, to add for um, accent. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. And I happen to have uh, two of the orange ones and two of the green, it's like a green uh, leaf pattern. So I figure I can use those top and bottom for symmetry. And um, the orange ones, I wasn't that concerned. In fact, both of them, the orange and the green, I wasn't concerned that they weren't um, necessarily cut properly. Sometimes when you cut off the branding strip, you get a little bit of the pattern paper uh, as well. And if it's in a spot where that's going to be obvious, then you need to trim that off. But I knew that I could hide that little um, irregularity underneath the pattern paper, so I wasn't all that worried. Um, when I add the other branding strips, I do need to trim them a tiny bit. Uh, sometimes when I line my trimmer up at the 12 inch mark, it's just not exactly 12 inches for some reason. <laughs> 
So now that I have that in place, I'm going to work on, on figuring out my photo placement. And I decide that these two really need to have a mat. So I take a piece of scrap. Uh, it's a turquoise. Um, you can see the back there. It was that blue camera print. On the other side, it was turquoise um, with just little polka dots on it, like tone on tone. And um, I don't have enough to mat the other two photos, but... I'm okay with that. There is a strip of it left so I can um, sort of have those photos sitting on a bit of a shelf. And I think that maybe I'll put my title down there, but I'm not sure at this point. Um, so I, I'm not sticking anything down just yet, but I do like the sort of shelf idea underneath the photos. So now I'm just working with the rest of the branding strips that I have. And... Um, the two pink ones are not the same. This one is sort of like a watercolored striated look. And then the other one has um, little white crosses on it. So I can't line them up across the page and have it be symmetrical. So I am definitely going to be using them in an asymmetric manner. It's just a matter of where I want them placed. So I place those two in the middle. Those are two full 12 inch strips because the bit of cloud branding strip up at the top there is not um, a full 12 inch anymore. So um, I decide not to use that to go across the divide of my double page spread. And I haven't glued that one down yet. I'm not completely convinced that that's where it's going to live yet. Um, so I, I will work on the rest of it until I can get up there. So now I'm just putting my photos down on that shelf of pattern paper and then I go looking for my title letters I figure that's got to be the next thing I do and I have these two sets of letters if you saw the video of my kit walkthrough you'll know what I'm talking about so one is a black and white striped chipboard letter set and the other one is a black um, sort of hashed hatched <laughs> pattern on acrylic and neither of them are complete sets, so I go through them to see what I can spell. And I can spell village by um, doctoring up some letters in the acrylic letters. And then I can I make the word hour out of the chipboard ones. Um, the R is was actually a B, and I just sort of cut off the middle of the bottom. Uh, it's not perfect, but I'm not super concerned about it. I did attempt to put these letters underneath the photos um, but because the acrylic ones are see-through and they are quite tall it really didn't look right so that's why I moved the title up above the photos and then um, I was I wanted to call it love our village and I knew that I had black lettering somewhere else I thought maybe I had um, a heart I used big foam hearts on a previous layout in this album um, but before I found that sheet of letter stickers I found this um, sheet of puffy stickers from the Maggie Holmes Bloom collection and it had the word love in black and I kind of thought that was quite serendipitous so that's how I finished off my title. Now I'm starting to stick down all the painted um, die cut pieces and the blue double frame is a little bit broken, uh, so you saw me put down the acrylic shapes and another of the arrow over top of the broken bit. And then I disguised, or further disguised, the incomplete arrow with that uh, bit of black acrylic word sticker. That sheet from of uh, puffy stickers from the Maggie Holmes collection has a lot of these little black word um, word and phrase stickers so I'm keeping that out on my desk and keeping it front and center in my mind so that I will remember to scatter those all around the page to bring the black lettering uh, across the layout so that it's not just all concentrated in the one spot there on the top left And then you saw me playing with my photo placement on the right hand side. And I decided, I wasn't sure if I wanted to have a little bit of that blue branding strip show up on the right. And I decided that yes, I did. 
And then it was a matter of, did I want the photos to line up or did I want the mats to line up? And I decided to have the mats line up um, because the block of photos is bigger anyways, because you, you, when you stack up the two four by six uh, landscape photos, it's an eight inch block. On the other side, I've got two by four by two four by six portrait photos, but that's only six inch. So it's going to be bigger anyway. So I decided to line it up at the bottom. And then um, because the title comes up above the photos on the left, that will sort of balance the height of the photos on the right, if that makes sense. And as I was placing down those frames on the left, I realized that I needed space for journaling. I didn't want to do it on the white background. I want to keep that quite white and light. So I just went through my set of supplies and I had pulled out lots of three by four journaling cards for this project to begin with. And this uh, teal or turquoise and white striped one was a perfect color match. And because it's got lines, uh, it's easy to write on. So um, I just trimmed it so that I had a turquoise stripe at the top and the bottom. I wasn't quite happy with the way it had been cut previously. So now I can just um, keep working on where all these die cuts are going to go. And I'm trying to make sure that the colors are um, showing up in each area. So I don't have a concentration of like blue in one area, pink in another. Um, I've got each, each area has the blue, the pink, the orange, and the turquoise. And then once I get basically all of those, I think there's only one that hasn't been glued down yet. Um, so once those are all glued down, I can get my journaling in. And as I'm writing, I realize I'm going to run out of room for what I want to say. So I had pulled out three different journaling cards that I thought would work. And this pink one, it has kind of a, um, like a bokeh or kind of effect in the background, like a light flare almost. So I just trim it in half. So it's basically one and a half by four inches now. And then I can finish off my journaling um, here on the right. And then I think about how I've now added um, something new onto the right. So I really want to add it over there onto the left. And I sort of place it there thinking about it while I get the rest of, of my stuff in place. And um, I haven't glued it down just yet. I'm going to put a few embellishments on. There were a few stickers on the sheet that I identified that would work. They had yellow in them, so I could bring the yellow that's in the paper um, onto the layout. And one was a heart in it. Um, I have um, the word awesome has a heart in the O, and then the cool have hearts in the O. So this one was a circle with a heart in it. So it, it the motif was exactly the same. Um, so I liked that continuity. And now I'm just putting some of those black word stickers um, scattered in each of the embellishment areas. And that one got put up on pop dots because it's sitting on top of another puffy sticker. And then I came back into that area and put a little puffy cross. Um, I, but I didn't put it down super hard because I, I knew that I might want to stick it underneath that piece of paper that I just pulled out. So I get that in place and I realize that I wanted to add um, letter stickers to the photos just to indicate the grade that the teacher, um, that uh, the grade the teacher taught my daughter, if that makes sense. Um, and then I also realized that I could use that bit of pink paper there to write their names um, because God help me, I will never remember their names 10 years from now. Once all my girls have left that school, I'm sure that the names will start slipping away pretty quickly. So then I, I just go through and I decide which color of those letter stickers I want to put on there. And I decide to go with pink. So the kindergarten teacher gets a K and then grade one gets a one and so on. And it's unfortunate that I don't have photos of the grade four, five and six teachers. But, um, you know, these teachers were probably her most influential teachers so um that's okay okay so layout's all done um after the camera's turned off i did add those turquoise enamel dots 
and I also did a little bit of um, like a faux border I guess um, at the top and the white was looking quite open and empty so I added a little messy line um, just at the top of the page and yeah it's all done I'm it, this took me a long time this took me probably two or three days to to really finish completely um, and for a while there I really thought it wasn't gonna come together but it did in the end so yay all right guys thank you so much and I will talk to you again soon bye bye